Today's project is a holiday decoration. It's called A Newborn King, and the pattern was designed by Steve Good. I'll leave a link to his website in the directions. I made the front from red oak and the back from walnut to provide a nice contrast and to display the details of the manger scene. I'll show you how to make this step by step and give you some tips along the way. I consider this an advanced beginner project. Making the backer to this nativity scene is an easy task on the scroll saw, just one long outside cut. I'm making the background half inch thick walnut, which will make a nice contrast to the red oak detail on the front. My rule of thumb is to use a number seven blade on half inch thick material, but there is a used number nine Pegasus modified geometry blade in the saw already, so that should work fine. If the blade is still sharp enough, I might slow down the speed some, but the cut is mostly gentle curves, so I'm experienced enough to handle these with a number nine blade. The backer can easily be cut by a beginner. Use your hands to guide the workpiece, let the blade do the work, and don't put too much pressure on it. But scroll saw blades are very small and can easily start to flex if too much pressure is applied. If the blade flexes, you lose accuracy, especially on curves. At worst, you can end up with a piece with sloping sides larger at the bottom than at the top, rather than a perfectly straight 90 degrees. And coming up to a sharp point on the star there, I cut right up to the point, back up the blade just a tiny bit, rotate the wood 90 degrees, then start, it, start cutting again by feeding the workplace into the blade. Because this is an outside cut, I follow the side of the star and go beyond it right to the edge of the workpiece. I can then toss away the scrap and start cutting the next edge of the star at the outside point. This allows me to cut a very sharp point. I follow the line drawn to the next intersection where I have to make another 90 degree turn. I can make the next point on the star by starting on the outside, following the line to the corner, backing out, then following the next line to that same corner. I'm left with a triangular piece of scrap that I can toss into a wastebasket next to the scroll saw. After making the last point on the star, I continue on with one long external cup. There are a couple of sharp turns, but mostly long, gentle curves. After cutting the backer, I moved on to the front, where all the details are cut out with a series of interior cuts. The first video I took of cutting the top piece was shot at an angle such that my hands obscured what I was doing, so I decided to reshoot that sequence. If you are very observant, you may have noticed that I am now working on a new Pegasus scroll saw. I have wanted this machine for some time and finally decided to make the purchase. I'll leave a link to my review in the description. I used a number 7 Pegasus modified geometry blade and started with the smallest interior cut. I wanted the points on the star to be very sharp, so from the pilot hole I drilled in the middle, I'll cut along one side of the star. Then, rather than try to make a very sharp turn and risk rounding the corner, I backed the blade up to the pilot hole, then cut along the next side of the star until it met the end of the line. This resulted in a sharp pointed interior cut. I removed the scrap and used the same procedure for the next two lines to form the next point, and so on, until the interior of the star was completed. There you can see the completed star interior cuts. I use a foot switch to start and stop the blade from cutting. It's much more convenient than having to use the on-off switch on top of the arm, especially when you're making a series of interior cuts. From the star, I moved on to cut out the section that defines the angel's wings. Because of the detail here to give the impression of feathers, you have no choice other than to back up when you get to the end of each line. Details like this make the difference between an average-looking project and one that really shows off your skill on the scroll saw. These cuts show off one of the features of the Pegasus scroll saw I really like. When you complete an interior cut, you release the tension on the blade, unscrew the upper blade knob, then lift up the arm. It stays in place while you move the workpiece over the next pilot hole, then you tighten the blade again, add tension, and start cutting. After completing the rest of the smaller interior cuts, I moved on to the largest. I, I had drilled the pilot hole to one side of the star so I could make the one long cut first, ending with the points of the star. The long cut actually has some detours where cuts are made to add details to the figures. You have a couple of choices to make here. You can make the long cut, remove the waste piece, then go back and make these little cuts at the detail, or you can make the detail cuts as you go along. 
I usually do things this way because the piece is stronger at this point than if you remove the waste piece. It's easy enough to manipulate the blade around in the waist to make all those little cuts. I found if you remove the waste piece first, you're sometimes making cuts on some very small pieces, and if you're not careful, you can put enough lateral pressure on them to cause them to break. There aren't any flimsy pieces here, but I didn't want to take any chances. Now I'm around to the star again. The angles on the outside of the star here are much larger than they were on the interior, so I'm able to make these cuts simply by maneuvering the workpiece. If you're new to scroll sawing, though, you might want to slow down the blade speed. Also, on the outer side of the points, you can go past the end into the waste material, then turn around and come back to the point where, from that side. Uh, for the interior angles, you could use the waste material area to back out, then cut the next line from there, as I did when cutting out the interior of the star. All that's left now is the one long outside cut. There aren't any areas I'm worried about on this piece, but sometimes when you get to the outside cut, you need to be careful where you grab the workpiece to control its movement. If you put too much pressure on a weak spot, you can cause a break that will be difficult, if not impossible, to glue back together. I used scroll saw tape to attach the pattern to the wood, and it's very easy to peel off, leaving no residue. The Pegasus saw and modified geometry blades yield a smooth cut with very little sanding needed on the back. This piece is now ready for glue on to the backer. Now that I have a completed walnut backer in the front of red oak, I'm ready for the glue up. These two woods contrast nicely, especially after finish has been applied. I'm using a white glue which dries clear. Make sure to get glue on as much of the oak piece as possible, especially along the edge, so the two pieces won't separate over time with changes in temperature and humidity. Since this is a water-based glue, on many projects I just spread it with my fingers and it easily washes off afterward with soap and water. I have a pair of jeans worn only in the workshop, so I'm as likely to wipe my fingers off on them as I am on a rag. You want to align the top carefully before putting it down on the backer because if you move it around much, you'll spread glue where it's not needed. Later, when you apply the finish, it won't stick to areas where glue is dried, and sanding it off these little areas in the middle of the picture will be nearly impossible. I chose not to use screw clamps to apply pressure for this glue up because when you turn them to tighten the work pieces have a tendency to want to move around. Since this is a flat piece, I put a piece of particle board underneath, then the work piece, then another piece of particle board before placing some weight on top. A nearly full gallon glue bottle provides enough weight, but you can use anything else in your shop that's handy and that provides enough downward pressure. This is a completed project with a couple of coats of spray polyurethane. You could make this out of any choice of contrasting woods and complete it with your choice of finish. I would love to read any comments you have on the project, and I try to reply to every comment as quickly as possible. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, and hit the subscribe button and bell to make sure you are notified of every new video as it is released.